A and J drive to the park to watch the celebration. Masses of revelers circle around a giant robot, moving close one at a time to touch its metal skin. A and J observe for a while and leave as it grows dark and loud, deciding to walk to the city's oldest theater for a late night show. A theater, once home to famous premieres, is rarely used for events of any significance now. It is empty and clean. A checks his watch during the film. It is six minutes after twelve. They take the long way back, arriving home just before dawn. Two robots launch their rockets into the sky. It is a new year. There is a single screen cinema A may have visited when he was young. There was a mirror in the lobby that made it seem like more of a home than a theater. He saw an animation there, but cannot remember its details. He doesn't know if the film or theater actually exist. A often visits the theater in his mind. He goes online and finds this sensation is called a false memory. Jay sees A forgot to take his watch off before falling asleep. Jay watches the second hand complete its orbit and attempts to focus only on its progress. He watches three minutes pass. Jay engraves a mark on the back of the watch every July. When Jay gave it to A, he said the back represented their past, the front, their present and future. Two dogs race through the tall, moving grass. One of them is faster than the other. They run parallel for a moment, and the faster one nips at the slower one. One of them makes a sound that could be an expression of pain. The dog doesn't need to open its mouth to make the sound. They dig into the layer of snow over the dirt. Then one suddenly stops and crouches close to the ground as the other disappears inside the grass. Icarus walks along the scaffolding towards his pod. He hopes control is working today. Jay stands on a bridge over a river. The entire city is surrounded by water. Its bays, lakes, and ponds all end in the ocean. A boat moves under the bridge. Jay knows the artist driving it. She has a camera mounted on the mast to capture the passengers and horizon. She says the sunsets are affected by a dense smog that rarely clears. Jay watches one of the city's oldest robots from his bedroom window. 
It casts a violet light. He lies down and focuses on the robot's giant hand. It has five large articulated fingers and octagonal knuckles. Jay falls asleep. The two dogs chase a truck along its delivery route. The dogs remind the truck driver of his favorite childhood videotape. They look like its hero, a wolf. They become small in his rear view mirror. Control leaves home at the time he always does, but arrives earlier than usual. He sits down at the steering column, turns four dials, pulls a switch, and reclines as his zeppelin slowly rises into the sky. The dogs find the truck again in a parking lot. They sniff and lick at its wheels. Jay watches their dog sleep in an armchair. She reminds him of A's old cartoons and looks melancholy with her clownish lips, resting at what Jay says looks like a grimace. That would make a good picture, at least for reference. For your piece, says Jay, looking for his camera, hoping the dog won't change position. A draws the wolf princess escaping in the guise of a shining knight. A red flag billows over her head. She has a crown of laurel and metal and accelerates as the woods grow deadly. Maybe she is unafraid. Maybe she knows she is going to die. A cannot decide whether or not she will ever reach her destination. Icarus looks at the television in his space shuttle but does not pay much attention to its broken transmission. It looks like a talk show. He once read about a host who was close friends with a recurring guest. They never saw each other off set, though they would exchange pleasantries through the closed door of her dressing room before the show began. This went on for decades. Icarus attempts to contact Control, waiting for the sound. The two dogs sleep in the bushes that divide an empty section of highway. The faster dog breathes almost imperceptibly. The slower's chest rises and falls so part of its body can be seen and then no longer seen over the body of the other dog. A and J lie in bed. The heat is on high. It reminds Jay of summer nights when he cannot sleep. He opens the window and lets in some of the cold air. In the early morning, there is a loud crash. A and J wake. Jay closes the window, then falls asleep. Jay walks the dog around the corner after breakfast and sees a destroyed semi. It is wrapped around a concrete barrier, but its robots are gone. Four robots launch their rockets over the city periodically between dawn and early afternoon. Visitors are surprised by the volume of the blast, but the residents are unfazed. Sometimes the rockets wash up on the beach and are as big as boulders. Today, writes Jay, 
six more times than yesterday. Icarus passes between the planets and prepares the land. His pod's route is mostly automatic, so he has a significant amount of free time. He draws on the fogged window to confirm his trajectory, timing the placement of the stars against his watch. He turns on his receiver and hears a rapid succession of languages he does not know, hoping to hear Control's voice on re-entry. A and J watch from the beach as the space capsule enters the atmosphere above the skyline. They know from the newspaper that Icarus is on board and will land soon, so they swim out into the ocean, half pretending to meet him somewhere at sea. A plays a song he has liked for a long time. It reminds him of a car chase. During the course, he sees a car skid, flip, and spray debris all over the road. He finds the music video online and realizes he's never seen it before. There is a driving scene and A waits for the car to crash, but it never does. J visits his favorite robot, while some are labeled official tourist destinations, most are left alone. It is located at the end of an alley with yellow walls. The robot is taller than Jay and similar to the one outside his bedroom window. Moss grows from its joints. Jay takes a sample home. He writes, green with specks of rust and soil. dreams. A burning house speeds down an empty highway. The road and flames tear it apart, but it never entirely disintegrates. Two other houses stand in an empty field along the highway. A buzzer sounds off and they catapult into each other, splintering into a shower of wreckage. A wonders who stages these events and how much they cost to perform.
control programs his Zeppelin to fly in a figure-eight pattern over the city for his entire 12-hour shift. He knows which advertisements are being projected by the light spilling into his cockpit. His spotlight looks like a solid cone in the evening haze. He watches it wash out all of the shadows of the tiny people below. A signal from Icarus initiates the screen. Jay engraves the seventh mark into the back of A's watch. Jay looks through the peephole in his studio door. As people leave, he pays closest attention to the ones he knows the least about. He tells their stories for them and locks up once the hall clears. A goes to the movies. During the coming attractions, he reads a newspaper left on an adjacent seat. As a child, his parents received the weekend edition of the same paper. A was always amazed at the amount of movies that played all over the city. Only a small fraction would ever be shown in his hometown. Icarus speaks with Control. He asks for confirmation and upon hearing Control's voice, Icarus starts to list coordinates. He begins to almost hum them, but stops himself. Jay sits with his back to the robot's massive foot in the garden, looking where visitors left circular footpaths in the leaves. He sees the twigs and veins of the leaves are crushed near his feet, but as he lifts his head and looks farther away, it's impossible to notice any sign of disruption. A walks by the Sunrise Theater. There is a light on the stairs and an anime poster outside that reminds A of his imagined theater. A abandons his previous plans and decides to see the film. Sitting down, he feels as if two realities are sliding over each other. He pretends to have found the film and theater he has been looking for until it begins. A writes down the names of cinemas related to his false memory. There was the Octagon, which screened cheap gay melodramas, the Inwood, built into the basement of a music store, and the Parker, the only commercial space on a tree-lined street. He adds to his list the Clearview, the Galaxy. He underlines the theaters he'd like to revisit. A and J drive into the city, forgetting that today is the robot parade. They wait for the light as a semi outfitted as a platinum phoenix passes in front of their car. The light changes, and they glance over at one of the enormous balloons stopped at the light as if it were obligated to. Icarus approaches the side of the planet that is bathed in night. 
he sees the dim light emanating from his craft and the small lights on the continents below. He dials control, and after a few minutes of static, he hears the unfamiliar voice of someone else. Jay visits his favorite robot when the district feels abandoned. Its color is dependent on the direction and quality of the surrounding light. As he observes, Jay imagines the robot may also be watching him. He wonders what the robots might have been like before the city was built around them. Control sees the touring craft and flies underneath it. It has a transparent floor that allows its passengers to see the city. They take pictures of him and his craft as he passes below. A call lights up Control's panel. Over static, he asks, Charlie Oscar November, do you read? I read. You're back. I'm back. Jay decides not to visit his robot because it's raining and he is tired. He spends the day inside reviewing his notes while A reads. A flips through his notebook and says to Jay, Sometimes I think we'll always live here. Other times I think we'll be gone soon. I don't know if we should leave, says Jay, and moves closer to the dog. Closing his eyes, A pictures the theater door then moves through the door past the concession stand and up the stairs. He turns a corner into the theater and sits in a chair by the exit. There are a few flaws on the screen that disappear after the projector kicks in and the screen lights up blue. 